Okay, so um, yes, welcome to our Taste of um, Spain class. Um, this will be on for about two seconds because it's actually quite heavy. And it, I, um, I, I probably should defer to Monty because she'd know whether it really is Spanish yeah. or not, but it's just, um, uh, yeah. um, <laughs> anyway, uh, um, welcome. I'll take that off and let's get going. Oh, yeah. All right, anybody who's not on mute, could you please mute yourself? That's, that's the first thing. Um, so welcome to our class. What we really hope you get out of this today is if you don't have a Thermomix, actually, that's a really good point. Down the bottom of the screen here, there's a chat box. And if you, can you just pop in there if you have a Thermomix? And if you do have, um, uh, if, if you do, what model you have, please. If you don't have one, I reckon you're going to want one by the end of this class because we're going to show you lots of really um, cool things and you're going to pick up some tips and hints along the way. Um, so my name is Mandy. I'm team leader of our multicultural mixes. We did have a Spanish girl on the team, but unfortunately she just left. But that's why we actually were going to do tapas. And um, also, um, I think it's just that time of year. You know, Melbourne is slowly opening up and it's a good, you know, sharing type of food. So um, that's why we're doing that. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Um, yeah, just basically to keep yourselves on mute if you wouldn't mind. And please feel free to post any um, uh, questions in the chat box, which is down the bottom there. And um, we've got plenty of us here to help you um, uh, help answer questions. All right. Oh, Karen Dale, that sounds exciting. TM6 on the way. Oh, my goodness. This, the TM6 has been flying out in the last week. I reckon they sold about 5,000. Uh, we've got this amazing offer with the second bowl and blade set for $99 when you purchase a TM6 and um, it, they have been flying out the door. So if you think you want one after anybody wants to upgrade after this, get onto your consultant ASAP. All right, um, what else? To, oh, okay, so I was just gonna tell you and Monsi, feel free to jump in with anything, um, particularly my pronunciation because I know it's not. So Monsi is a, is a Thermomix consultant who I've known for, Quite a long time, and um, she is Spanish, so uh, and my pronunciation is going to be terrible. I did one year of Spanish when I was sixteen, a long time ago. All right, so um, just thought I just out of interest, just tell you a little bit about what um, tapas, the origin of tapas, what I found online. It, um, so a tapa is a small portion of food or a snack. The Spanish tend to eat quite late, from you know nine to ten o'clock at night. That's when I'm going to bed. Um, but it leaves time for a tapa or a snack sort of in the early evening. In some areas in, of Spain, um, uh, tapas are served free with drink. And the idea with this is that, you know, they can be salty and they'll make you actually want to have more to drink. So you're going to spend more money. Uh, the origin. So I've found two things online and my daughter told me one that she was told when she was in Spain. Um, the tapa comes from the verb ta tapa, or however you pronounce it. Um, which means to cover. And one possible start of tapas was bartenders using a small piece of bread with something put on top of it to, um, with a piece of ham or something on top to cover a drink and stop the dust getting into the drink because the streets are quite dusty. And Rachel, my daughter, also said flies. Um, another theory is apparently that King Alfonso X, when recovering from an illness, was prescribed a large amount of alcohol wine, alcoholic wine, to help cure him. And to de decrease the effect of the alcohol, he had to have frequent snacks between meals. Um, so, and then after that, he ruled that a snack should be served um, with a drink to prevent public drunkenness. So there you go. This is what this is all about, to prevent public drunkenness. But what we're gonna do, we have a few dishes that we're gonna show you today. And first of all, um, we're gonna head off to Nicole. Oh no, yeah, Nicole. Um, and uh, she's going to start off and she'll, so Nicole is quite a new member, actually a lot of them are new members of our team, but she's doing an uh, amazing job and it's over to her now. Thanks very much, Mandy. Uh, so first up, I'm making the patatas bravas with chorizo. Um, so we're really looking forward to having this one later today. Um, I've done all my prep uh, before we got on film, just to make it a bit easier. And I've got my oven preheating to 200 degrees because we'll need that a little bit later. Uh, so first up, we're going to add a tablespoon of olive oil straight into the bowl. 
Nicole, can you just angle your camera down so we can see the screen, please? Uh, I Is don't that like possible or not? Perfect. Uh, no, it's not going to stay there, isn't it? Okay. All right. No, sorry. Okay. That's as low as it can go and stay standing. Yep. Okay. Um, and I've got 60 grams of red onion along with two garlic cloves. I'm adding in a fresh chili, which I've just chopped up into chunks there. I've left the seeds in because we need a challenge. And I'm just gonna pop the lid on with the measuring cup in place so we don't redecorate the kitchen. Um, I'm just gonna cut that up for uh, three seconds at speed seven, so it's gonna be quite loud. You won't hear me for a little bit. Excellent. And as you can see, that's done a great job of chopping that all up for us. I'm just going to scrape down the sides. Wait for a second. And I'll pop the lid back on. And it's just going to cook that for three minutes on Varoma. So that'll go quietly now for the next three minutes. That's just going to saute the onions and everything. So it's a little bit cooked before we go on to the next step. Okay, and um, the next step is some steaming, is that correct? Yes, that's right. All right. So do you want to, can you explain about the basics of steaming, Nicole? Or would you like me to do that? Uh, would you mind doing that? Yeah, Sorry, sure. it's a little noisy here. You can't hear. All right. All right. So when you're steaming um, using your Baroma, um, you should always, the basics are that you have uh, 500 mils of water in the bowl of your Thermomix and you steam it for the stated time and you will find examples of this either in your um, basic cookbook. If you have a TM5, it's at the front. If you have a TM6, it's at the back. Uh, and you steam for that stated time on Varoma temperature with the 500 mils of water uh, on speed one. Now, if the, if that stated time is longer than half an hour, you add an extra 15 minutes to, um, sorry, an extra um, 250 mils for extra, every extra 15 minutes of steaming time. So, um, so that, that is a general rule for steaming. If you're using guided cooking, it will tell you all of that and it will have calculated how much water you need in there, et cetera, et cetera. But um, otherwise that is, that is a basic rule. There is also on Cookie Do, which we are gonna have a quick look at later. Um, there, in America, there is a, an essentials um, collection got about 20 recipes in it and in there it does go through how to steam potatoes and fish and chicken and all sorts of things as well as some great chopping um, tips, tips and hints, maybe said hints and tips but that's, that's not right, tips and hints as well. So um, there are definitely guided cooking recipes that you can use for um, as a guide for your steaming but um, that general rule I told you is also in your basic cookbook at the beginning of the steaming section. Uh, another tip for steaming is to um, shorten the time, you can actually start with um, boiling water. And that will generally to bring your cooking time down by about five minutes. Uh, you'll see in some recipes, uh, I did a recipe uh, last night and it actually said um, 10, I think it allowed eight minutes for the water to heat up. If you put boiling water in, it's probably gonna get there in, in three. So just another little um, tip for speeding things up. I mean, the thermix does a great job of that anyway, uh, but that's um, yeah, that's something else you can do. How are we going, um, Nicole? How many? How much longer? Twenty seconds left. Twenty seconds. Perfect. All right. Well, we'll come back to you then. Excellent. So I just got the varoma out, so I'm ready to go on with the next step. Um, one thing I've realised is really helpful because I'm throwing going to be throwing potatoes into here, and they're all chucked up a bit cubey. Um, when I'm steaming, I put my butterfly whisk in the bottom of my bowl first, um, which will keep the potatoes away from blocking the holes of the steamer, which lets it steam a little bit more evenly. 
So now that it's had a little chance to cook, smells pretty fantastic, I have to say. We're going to add just a pinch of cayenne pepper. Healthy pinch. And we're going to add a pinch of smoked paprika. And 400 grams of, uh, 400, yeah, 400 grams of canned chopped tomatoes. And salt to taste. Now we're putting our dish on top and like I said, I've got the butterfly whisk in place already to try and keep the potatoes away from the vents. And it's asking us to weigh in 800 to 850 grams of potatoes that are chopped into pieces, which I've done already. We're just gonna pop the lid on. And now I'm going to put it on. It's going to steam the potatoes there for about 20 minutes. The tomatoes and the vegetables in the bottom will provide enough moisture um, to do that cooking without us having to add any more water at this stage. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Right, back to me, Boone, please. All right, so um, I've got a couple of dishes that I'm making today, but I'm starting off with the potato tortilla. Uh, as I mentioned, we did have a Spanish girl on our team and I had a little chat with her and she said, you cannot have tapas without a, a potato tortilla. So that is what we're going to make. So just coming up to my screen here. Um, all right, so I did notice there's someone on here with a TM31. So I'm just actually going to give you a quick little rundown on the TM6. So we have um, the beautiful big screen, which is almost the size of a mini iPad, and it's just fantastic. It is a smart connected kitchen. It's connected to the internet, which is why we can then just go straight in um, and um, select recipes. We've got time, temperature, speed, whichever one of those is large is controlled with this knob here. If we flick this way, we've got a whole lot of different functions here. We've got sc our scales, which are one gram increments, um, dough and turbo, which you have on the TM5 and the TM31. Anyway, um, we've got the pre-clean, which you also have on the TM5. That is, I'm just loving that. It's just fantastic. We have four different types of pre-clean for a dough, universal clean, um, fat and, um, and browning. So uh, you can just put some water in there, cover your blades with water. If you're using the browning function, make sure you use vinegar, not um, dishwashing liquid, and you just put it on and walk away. And honestly, you just have to rinse it. It's fantastic. Automatic blend, rice cooker, Thicken mode for your custards and um, bechamel sauces. Warm up mode. Um, Keisha and I did a little filming of some baby food yesterday. I thought this would be fantastic for the for the warming up um, function on your um, screen. Sorry, I've got, I've got extra bit on my. Anyway, um, we've got uh, kettle mode. We've got an egg boiler and flick this way. The great exciting thing is we've still got space here to go. We've got fermentation mode, slow cook, and sous vide. Um, if I come back to my home button, I can do that there. And then I can actually just go in here and go straight to the internet and cookie do. Uh, so here we are, the, the recipes that it comes up with um, straight away are the latest recipes on our cookie do collection. And these are all the low carb recipes that came out recently. But what I've done is I've actually, um, put my recipes into my week for my meal planning. So I click on here, come to my week. And red pepper Spanish tortilla with olive tapenade. Start cooking. All right. So I'm actually going to do, I'm going to start my potatoes because I've got to steam some potatoes and things first too. So I'm actually going to flick through this recipe. But before I do, I'll show you, I'll show you how you can flick through the recipe in a minute. Just notice that my um, that I'm, I'm in ounces. This is an American recipe, and your your Thermomix will automatically change the um, the the units of measure to um, to ounces. But what I can do because I'm I'm going to um, start partway through, and I'm going to once I've got that going, I'm actually going to make the tapenade and the other Thermomix. You can go to recipe detail, 
Now you can use this and you can scroll down here. So I'm coming to the tortilla here. So I can just click on this here or this, whatever, and it should come up. She says, here we go, straight to that step. So two ounces of Parmesan cheese. I'll take my lid off, which means I've just got to tear. So I've just got my cheese chopped up like that. There we go. No harm with just a little bit of extra Parmesan cheese. Pop my lid on. Then it's just going to chop for five seconds. All I have to do is turn up to speed nine, which is round here. Okay, so it just makes sure that the bowl is set aside and then I've got our clean bowl. So this is one of the great advantages of this amazing offer we have on at the moment. I'm actually lucky. I have two TM6s and I have three bowls. Um, so I'm just putting a clean bowl on there. So I have red onion, which is lurking in, in the bottom here. Um, I have some garlic. And I have parsley. I'm going to put all that in. And then I have to weigh my olive oil in. It's just because I'm moving around here. Oops, there we go. All right, put my lid on. And that's just going to chop for three seconds on speed five. I'll scrape down the sides. Yeah. My lid on and that is going to you, see, you can see I'm in Fahrenheit here as well so 250 degrees Fahrenheit two minutes 250 just turn to speed one and whilst that's happening there we're going to come across to the other thermomix here where I'm going to get the recipe up again and here we're going to start at the beginning so I'm going to put in I've got all these things that I've obviously got ready beforehand it makes life a little bit easier for us when we're doing this I've got two ounces of pitted black olives. I've got two ounces of pitted green olives. I've got one tablespoon of capers, two sun-dried tomatoes, um, five basil leaves, uh, and I've got to put my head in. So all those other bits and pieces have gone in. And I've got to put my paprika in. I never know what an eighth of a spoon is, whatever goes in there, I'm sure it's fine. What else do I need? One teaspoon of balsamic vinegar. Okay, that's done. Put my lid on. Three seconds, speed five. And um, notice I'm using this stylus. I'm finding this really good for, um, for not getting sticky fingers all over the, um, the screen. So that's the tapenade so far. Okay, um, I'm just gonna scrape down the sides. All right, pop the lid on again. And chopping, just chopping a little bit more. You can hear that, but it was it was done. So I'm going to transfer that to a bowl in a minute. But what's 
happening over here. His uh, cooking here is just finished. So I'm going to put that into a large bowl. I'll show you. Um, oh my gosh, it smells amazing. So um, pop this into a bowl. Got a bowl Remembering when you scrape your bowl out, always good to go in a clockwise direction because then you go against the rounded side of the blades, not the sharp side. All right, so that's there. Right, 17 and a half ounces of water. So I've got my kettle, um, I did boil it before. This is going for the time, as I mentioned before. All right, so I'm putting my varoma in position, so I can put my lid on first, uh, and I'll show you what I'm what I put into my varoma. So I have got to put in here. It says seven ounces. It does say peel the potatoes. I haven't peeled them. I know it might be a very big sin. I'm not sure. We'll have to ask Mincy about uh, Monty about that, but I haven't peeled them because um, a lot of the nutrition is just underneath the skin, as we know. Um, I've got some red pepper as well. And I haven't put my butterfly in just because I've got some of these bits and pieces underneath my potato so that um, I've still got plenty of, um, of uh, steam being able to circulate through there as well. And the mushrooms. So I'm going to pop that lid on my varoma just sitting up there. Okay. And that's going to steam for 15 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it though because I have um, got the boiling water in there. So we'll see how we go with that. All right, so um, we're off to Pearl now. Um, and Pearl is going to make um, the meatballs. You're on mute, Pearl. Yes, I'm mute. Yeah, okay. All right, you're good now? Yeah. Okay. Welcome to my kitchen and I'm making meatballs with romesco sauce. So I have saved my recipe in my week and now we can start cooking. Okay. So can you see my recipes? My screen? Okay. Uh, today, what I have done, I have made the sauce earlier because of saving a bit of time today. Uh, I want to show you all how to grind uh, or mince your own meat. So let's start with, go here, meatballs. So that's one advantage of uh, TM6. You can scroll down and find your recipe and start from there. So I start with point six. that's Got some topside beef. This is all pre-weighed. You're back to front, Pearl. The screen is no, 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 no. The screen, we're, the writing is back to front for us. Oh, is it? Um, okay. But look, if you can just talk us through it now, and okay, um, okay fine. So uh, this is now 500 grams of uh, beef that I have put in. So I bought it from the butcher and I didn't weigh it actually, just chopped it. Now, the next step, it's telling me insert the measuring cup. That's what I have done. And then turn to speed seven for 10 seconds. So I'm just chopping it for 10 seconds. I'll just show it to you. That's the uh, 
a bit of a problem have you using two cameras see how well the meat has got minced in just 10 seconds so i'll just take it aside Next, 250 grams of chorizo, sausage, casing removed. I have pre uh, prepared everything ahead. Next, half a red onion. I've got it here. Two garlic cloves. I put four garlic cloves because I like a bit of garlic. Parsley, I've got it here. A slice of bread, homemade bread as well. With the, the thermal mix, put all that here. Next, turbo six or seven times. Next. Oh, this is very beautifully chopped. Then my spices, that's half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, some fennel seeds, smoked paprika, sea salt, and ground black pepper. Put all that here and one egg. Also from my chickens at home. Next, add the reserved mints. Insert the measuring cup. That's what I'm doing. And mix it for 10 seconds on speed seven. Next, all done. So now I'm going to roll it into small meat balls. This is what I have got, if you can see. So I'll roll it into meat balls and it can come back to me, Mandy. Lovely, thank you. Um, Nicole, how are you going? How long have you got on this, those? You're on mute. I've got three minutes, 30 seconds. All right, okay. Well, I, have you come back to me, Boone? We're going to test everybody's knowledge on Spanish food. All right. So I've got a little bit of a quiz. And Monty, I apologize in advance. Oh, um, no, no. I was about to say something about the potatoes. Oh, yes. Before say, please. you mention, um, it's true. Everybody peels their potatoes. And I am with you that there are all the nutrients on the skin. Yeah. Um, so maybe you can peel them and use it as for stock as well. But yeah. yes, on the potatoes, as you can see, the Spanish tortilla is quite light. So yes. it will give extra color, the fact that you have the skin. Oh, and the you. way to cut it, uh, there are people who like to cut it in cubes or the one in, you know, uh, slices. But, you know, at least it's true that we do peel them. Although, you know. Right. OK, thank you. Thanks for that. OK. No all right, now you're, you're going to die with my pronunciation. Oh, okay, no, so. no. Well, you can <laughs> die with mine in English. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so first first quiz question. Come sin vino is come mesquino. What does this mean? And I've got three answers for you, multiple choice. Um, no, a is a meal without wine is a stingy meal. B is such as um, the, the wine is like the boss of the house. And C is eating without wine is like eating mosquitoes. So just put in your chat box um, what you think. I mean, Modsy will know, but 
<laughs> well, hopefully. <laughs> Yes, A is correct. Okay, a meal without wine is a stingy meal. Okay, no stingy meals at the badge house, obviously. <laughs> All right, another, another question. What is, I've got, again, it's multiple choice. What is tortilla española? A is fried eggs, B is a traditional dessert, C is an omelette made with potatoes, eggs, and sometimes onion. Yes, you're all onto that one. Yeah, see. Okay. And I, 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 my pronunciation is going to be bad with this one too. I apologize in, in advance. What is the name of a traditional Catalunya sausage? Pulse. Um, fuet, which is, which is spelled F-U-E-T, or chorizo? It's pronounced fuet. Fuet, thank you. I was going to do something like that. I sort of, that's my French coming out. <laughs> Well, I suppose it's because it's so close to France. Yeah, yes, do share yes, things. that's true. Although, although in French it would be double T E. Anyway, no, you're all wrong. It it is the fouet. Is the Oops, is the, I gave it away. <laughs> no, 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 no one else got. No one got it right though. All right. Um, which Spanish dessert is traditionally eaten at Christmas? Turon, tortel, tarta de Santiago. Come on, some guesses there. Yeah, the answer is A, the Tehran. So the Tehran is like a, um, a nougat. Is that right, yeah. Monsi? Yes, that's correct. And yes. you can make it on the Thermomix. Yeah, fantastic. All right. Nicole, you just need to let me know when you're ready because I can keep, uh, I've got a few more questions, but, but if you're ready, we'll come back to you. Yep, I'm just finishing now. All right, okay, let's go back to Nicole then. Excellent. So it's just finished. It cooled down for eight seconds and it's asked me to set the Varoma aside for the time being. So I'll do that without burning myself. Now, next, it's asked me to put the lid back in and we're going to mix up the sauce that was in there. So you remember that we had the tomatoes, the chili and onion and everything. So that's cooked down now. And we're just going to mix that for 30 seconds at speed five. Okay, now we're just going to transfer once it's ready to release. Oh, it smells fantastic. And I will show you the sauce there. It's all emulsified now. So I'm just going to transfer that into a thermo server to keep warm. And while I do that, We'll move on to the next step, which is putting the potatoes onto a baking tray and topping with the chorizo, which I've already chopped up earlier into little pieces and done really well not to snack on while we've been watching. Um, and I'm gonna bake that in the oven. So I'm happy for you to go back to someone else while I stick that in the oven now for 15 minutes initially, and then for another 25 to 30 minutes. All right, we're off to Pam. Okay. On my bigger one, um, thanks, Boone. Okie dokie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm, I, one of the things I'm, uh, I love about my Thermix is cooking all sorts of unusual things that I wouldn't necessarily try. So I, today I'm doing a watermelon and salmon ceviche stack. Now, again, as I said, I wouldn't necessarily try this. If I saw it in a recipe, I thought, oh, God, that sounds a bit complicated. And this is the nice thing about guided cooking. It just basically tells you what to do all the way along. And I've tried this. It's surprisingly easy. So um, we might just start. Boone, if you want to go down to my um, small camera, that would be great. Thank you. And so we'll just, so this is what it looks like. You can see on the screen. We're just going to start cooking. 
So half a fresh jalapeno chili, de-seeded, I did de-seed it, and I cut it into halves or two, like that. I've just actually cut it into thirds, plop that in. Now, I don't eat red onion, and if I was cooking for you at home in a normal um, uh, cooking experience, I would be putting that in, but uh, seeing I'm going to be the one eating it, we're not having that one today. Uh, and I've got some coriander leaves here, which um, probably a little bit more than four, but gives it a bit of flavour. So pop that in. And this is the nice thing about cookie dough. Sometimes you can have a bit of a play with it and just add a little bit more or less, depending on what you like. So round to speed seven. Now, I'll just give this a scrape. Just have a look to see if that's chopped everything up well. And I'm sure, oh yeah, it's looking great. So you can see all the um, coriander and the, actually the, the jalapeno is not quite as much as I'd like. I might give, give it another quick little blitz. Oh, that coriander smells fabulous. I know some people aren't huge coriander fans, but I love it. That, a quick little pulse. I'm gonna go to turbine. And give that a very quick little bit. Okay, and back to my recipe. You saw the little bookmark there. So we just wait for that to open and I'll scrape down those sides again. That's better, yeah. Okay. Okie dokie. Now, I've got my two pinches of cumin and smoked paprika. I'm just going to plop those in. Sea salt and pepper. Thank you, guys. And lime juice, which I've also, I've just um, done that previously. So we... There we go, that was minus one, so that's right. And two tablespoons, two teaspoons rather of avocado oil, which is um, a lovely friend of mine gave me this. Wodonga Park, organic extra virgin olive oil. Yum, it's beautiful. It's a magnificent rich colour. Okay. Now I'm going to put the salmon in. I have... Um, Because we're eating this effect, well, it's raw, but we're cooking it in the lime juice. But it's, um, I've used sashimi grade salmon for this, um, just probably because I wanted to be a bit careful. <laughs> um, and I've just diced that up. It says one centimetre pieces. Um, I've done them a little bit smaller. You can sort of see there. I've done them a little bit smaller because it fits on the um, stack a little bit better. So I'm just going to pop that in now. But it's lovely, um, delicate fish. Now, I need 200 there. I need 250, so I'm going to add a little bit more. I've got some in my fridge. Hiding. So with something even as delicate as that, the Thermomix, because it's on reverse, we're just going to turn that to speed three on reverse, and it's not going to chop it any further because the reverse is the um, is the rounded side of the blades. And so that, Ash, if you can see, it's mixed it up beautifully. Now that needs to cook, so to speak in the fridge for about 10 minutes. Um, now, Boone, you might like to come back to the big camera, please. And so I'm just going to put that in there. If you can see that, it's um, just nicely mixed in and that's coated in all the lovely marinade. I'm going to put that in the fridge for 10 minutes. It doesn't need more than that, otherwise it'll cook too much. So just 10 minutes in the fridge. And while I'm waiting for that, 
I'll show you um, what I've done with my um, watermelon. Now I've got two different size cookie cutters here. This larger one, um, and what I did is just pop it on top and then you press them out. So literally just like that. You can do it on the fluted side if you want to. I'll leave that one in there. And I've also got a smaller one. So again, just cut the little rounds like that. So you can see the size. So that's more a bite size piece. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. Now we've got some lovely uh, Christmas cookie cutters on the mix shop. So you can do all sorts of things like that and do maybe some Christmas stars or something like that if you're doing something for a Christmas function. Because of the colours in this, it's a great thing to have for um, for Christmas things. So what I'm going to do is leave that for in the fridge for 10 minutes and then perhaps you could come back to me and I will um, basically plate it up. But uh, effectively, you just put the... Put the um, salmon on top you have it in the in the Christmas in the cookie cutter pile it in press it down a tiny bit so it holds and so you use the shape of the um the cutter to hold it in place and then pop it on a on a plate to present so it's a lovely dish nice and simple great for pre-Christmas um or just fun drinks thanks I'll, thanks, I'll see you shortly <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic that they look really beautiful and you're right very Christmassy and I love the thought of using star cutters for for a Christmas um, thing. Yeah. So we are off to, actually, we'll ask, I'll ask one question, then we're off to Keisha. All right, so what kind of fish is used in the fish stew called marmataco? A, mackerel, B, pike, or C, tuna? Come on, guesses. Come on, there's more than one person can guess. <laughs> All right, you're both wrong though. No, that's wrong too. So it's obviously C. So tuna, tuna is in there. And I'll do one more question. Um, okay, what is the most popular traditional food in Spain? A, paella, B, pisto, C, croquette. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty easy one, that one, A. Beautiful. All right. So we are off to Keisha's kitchen, please, Boone. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Keisha. I'm be cooking today the stuffed mushrooms with manchego cheese, which I don't have manchego cheese. I have cheddar cheese that I've chosen, and you can use mozzarella instead. So if we have a look here, I've selected the uh the recipe on the cookie dough and we start cooking and asking me to preheat oven to 180 degrees which i've done it just press next and line the casserole dishes with baking paper and put aside uh remove mushroom stalks and and put aside i've got these mushrooms here this is how uh, we can see um, they've been removed and I've put an oil around them so they bake much better so we get the flavors. And it's asking for Swiss brown mushrooms which are much better because they've got more fl uh, flesh and ju juicy. I've got plain mushrooms. and they're asking to brush the mushrooms all over with the oily oil, which I did. And now we asking me to place 130 grams of, um, of cheese into the bowl. I cut into pieces. And one slice of bread, stale bread. I had it all bread, so I put it here. Insert measuring cup, insert measuring cup, and press next. And we're gonna go for eight seconds on speed nine. It's gonna be a bit noisy. Okay. 
press next and remove from the bowl. So it shredded beautifully for us. Next, asking for, I don't have to clean the bowl, which we love uh, all of us, so if we don't have to wash the dishes. So he's asking us to put two spring onions and garlic, which I put it together. And garlic. And leaves of three spring, uh, of, of three, of springs of fresh parsley. So just leaves. Uh, the stalks of the mushrooms. And we're gonna chop it now, chop it. So ask me for measuring cup to put it on top. And it's gonna go for three seconds on speed five. Next. So it's nicely chopped. Asking to scrape the bowl from sides. And asking me for 20 gram of oil, which I measure already. So it should be where well, we can tear it and have a look. So it's 20 grams. And we put, I just check olive oil and measuring cup. And it's gonna cook for two minutes on speed one. So we can go to you, Mandy, for questions. Hello, Mandy. All right, yep, yep, no, I'm here, I'm here. So, all right, a couple of things I was just gonna show you too is um, host rewards. So you know when you host a cooking experience, you get access to host rewards. This um, this is fantastic for tapas, little dishes. To, uh, the, the, those are the mini thermo servers. You can get access to two of those when you host a cooking experience. Um, so that's, that's one to think of. And the other one that you probably haven't seen before is this one. And this is a, a new, so a white thermo server. It's actually very pretty. Um, there's a beautiful picture of it with, you know, pink that'd be great for, you know, for fruity dreams and things. Very pretty. Uh, it also fits inside your Varoma. So you can use it for making, um, for making yogurt. Uh, so that, that, those are two of the new, well, this is a new host reward. We also have bread mats if you're into bread making, and we have two other thermo servers as well, which you'll see a little bit later on because I'm going to put some of my stuff into a thermo server. But those, those are our current um, host rewards. We also have the blade cover. Now, um, I haven't got my blade cover out, I'll grab it. But the blade cover, You get access to the blade cover, and I'll show you how you put it on. So basically, what it does is it does cover your blades. You just pop it on there, so it, it covers them up. Um, we had a little bit of discussion about this the other day, and some of the great ways of using it. What I use it for is I'm very much um, uh, try to be as sustainable as possible, so I'm trying to cut down on my tins. And uh, what you can do is you can buy, you know, dried chickpeas and dried beans and things. You can slow cook them in your thermo mix with the blade cover in. Um, that you also save money doing it that way because it's a lot cheaper to do it that way. Um, the other thing um, I know uh, Libby was saying was the poaching your eggs. You can just drop your eggs in here um, with the with the with the um, the water turning and obviously a temperature and poach your eggs in there. And there are a lot of other recipes you can sous vide, you can slow cook using bigger volumes of the bowl. So those are available as a host reward this month, when you host a cooking experience and someone purchases at your cooking experience, not available if no one, if, if a guest doesn't purchase, but 
they, um, so I, I love it from a sustainability perspective. Um, that's, that's really cool. I'm done. You're done. Okay, back to you then. Okay, so it nicely cooked. It smells divine. You can have a look. So let's see what the next step tells me to do. Uh, two pinches of ground cayenne pepper, two tablespoons of dry oregano. So the here I've got oregano and sea salt and the pepper, which I've got it here. And of course the breadcrumbs and the cheese. And it's asking to put a measuring cup again on top. And what it will do, it will blend for on three seconds on speed three. Next. I might do it again because it didn't mix properly. So I'm just gonna go back and do it again. much better so it blended together everything i'm gonna put into the mushroom cups the the mixture and i'm gonna put it in the oven it says to put it in the oven for 10 15 minutes thank you lovely thanks keisha great job all right a question and then i will um another quiz question okay this is a good one what is used to color a paella nigra? A, soy sauce, B, squid ink, or C, food coloring? Yeah, you're all onto that one. The squid ink, absolutely. All right. Okay, so I'm back to my talk here. Uh, and um, what I've done is, so remember I was steaming some um, the potato and the capsicum and the um, uh, mushrooms in the top. Just a quick little tip, whenever you take the lid off your Varoma, always turn it away from you so that your steam goes away from you and not in your face. But I, um, it asked me to just to remove that. I um, put it in with my bowl. What's my bowl there? Over here. Um, in the bowl with the other mixture we did at the beginning. So I've just got everything mixed up there. Okay. Right, now I've got to have six large eggs. I've broken all these before. So my mother always taught me to break your eggs separately. So I've done all that to save us a bit of time. Six large eggs, two ounces of whole milk, um, half a teaspoon of ground paprika, salt and pepper. All right, so that's what the red is. It's nothing funny. It's paprika on top of my eggs, all right. All right, that's all going in. My lid on. Okay, and it's just going to mix that all up together. We've got um, 10 seconds, speed four. Transfer into a bowl with the other ingredients and stir and combine. So obviously my egg's just been mixed up. You'll see it as I pour it in. Okay, so the spatula to combine. All right. Grease a non-stick oven-proof frying pan. So this size is my smaller size frying pan. I have, you can see I've put some olive oil on that and place it over a medium heat. And then I'm, so I'm gonna put that on the stove top. I'm gonna to transfer this mixture into it. And it says, ensure the vegetables are evenly spread out. And then I'm gonna sprinkle with that Parmesan cheese that we um, grated at the beginning. I'm gonna reduce it to a low heat and cook for six to eight minutes until the eggs are set on the bottom, um, but the top is still a little bit runny. And after that, it's gonna go into the oven for six minutes. 
So I will um, start doing that and we will go back to Pearl, um, who can just show us how she's going with her meatballs. Okay, I have finished cooking my meatballs and they look so good. That's and they amazing. taste good as well. I've tasted them and they are fantastic. They're lovely. That's wonderful, Pearl. Thank you. Um, we actually made them, I made some last night for um, nibbles. We had um, some people over for dinner uh, and, um, and they were delicious and I, I baked them in the oven. So you yeah, can obviously I, either I fry them or too. you can bake them. Yeah. yeah. I, mine. All right. Oh, goodness, it's back to me again already. Hold on. Let me just um, get my tortilla going here. All right. So, I'll just show you what's happening over here. So I've got my tortilla on there, and I'm just going to let that um, cook whilst I get going with my other recipe. I'll go into this, this one because it's on. Um, so just a little tip to, if you don't know, the three little dots here, I can tap on there. Uh, I can also go to scales. I can cancel my recipe. So I do want to cancel that recipe. I'm going to change my bowl. Turn the bowl on. And I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to go to my week because what I'm actually going to make now are these spiced garlic prawns. So I've pr obviously prepared my calamari. Um, little small eye on my tortilla too. <laughs> All right. So, um, so basically, I had to cut the hood in half. I had to lay it out. I had to cut it across horizontally, and then just chop into. You'll see the slices sizes when I get to it. Uh, and I've got them there with the the prawns in a bowl. Right. Now I have in here four garlic cloves. Two pieces of lemon zest. So really important when you do your lemon zest that you, you don't get the white pith on there. Two bits like that. I've got my long red chili in there. I haven't de-seeded and I've got parsley and coriander. So all those bits are going in there. And Three seconds, speed 10. Right, let's poke down the sides of the bowl. Woo, look at that. Beautiful. Not gonna get oh, not gonna get my head too close though. Spicy. The lid on again. Other three seconds. Right, get out the scrape down the bowl again. That is seriously spicy, I can tell you. Forty grams of olive oil. Now, just thinking before too, like with this stylus pen, um, as I said, what I love about it, you don't get um, sticky fingerprints all over your screen, which is great. But um, later this month, I think it's starting from the twelfth, and if anybody else can help with that date, that's um, that would be helpful. I think it's the twelfth. We, the mix shop will be having some sort of flash sales. So every day there's going to be a deal on there. Um, that's my white wine. So worth having a look out for that. I think you can register for it to, uh, to get the emails into your inbox. So if you have a consultant or if you're someone that, that's on my um, Facebook page, then you, I will be definitely posting up there every day what's, what's on offer that day. Salt. Excuse me. It's just a good, you, you can tell, look at my beautiful jacket. I'm doing that. Um, it's going on. Oh my goodness, my tortilla. Looking good. 
three minutes on um, speed one. And I'll just take you over here. So can you see it's drawing away from the edge of the pan there um, as the bottom of it's cooking. So um, I'll just give it a couple more minutes on there and then I'll transfer it into the oven. In the meantime, a couple more questions. Okay. What is chorizo? A hamburger, a pork sausage, or a rice dish? Oh, sorry, A was hamburger, B was a pork sausage, and C was a rice dish. Yep, yep, the B's win, that's cool. What is not usually found in paella? Um, a is rice, B is chocolate, and C is seafood. So not found. Yeah, no, B's right. What is the name of the chilled tomato based soup from Andalusia? Andalusia. Uh, a is despacho. B is, and I'm going to pronounce this terribly, ajo blanco, which is a cold garlic soup. Or C is salmorejo, topped with jamon and hard boiled eggs. So, which is the tomato based one? Oh, someone answered that already. Yes, despacho. Perfect. Okay, good to see you anyway, Kelly. Um, what rare spice is Spain a producer of? And I didn't know this, I have to say. A is chili, B is saffron, and C is turmeric. Well, no one else knows this. Monty, do you know the answer to this one? Saffron? Yeah, it is, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the saffron is the flower of crocus. And yeah. it can apparently be used um, to help alleviate depression. Okay, and also to dye the cut the rice on the paella. We use saffron. Oh yes, okay, yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, but I'm just going to put my um, tortilla into the. Oh, I can't see that. Pop that into the oven now. That looks spectacular, Mandy. Oh, really yeah. gorgeous. I have to say, I have never put a fry pan in the oven before. So I did check and it says that my fry pan should be fine. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I have um, to say, we don't yes. put it in the oven. You put Sorry. a plate on top of your pan as you've done it yeah. and flip it over and then do the other side oh the same goodness. way. Yeah, Fantastic. It, has, it needs a little bit of skill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not going to do that in front of everybody for the first time, I can tell you. <laughs> what I have realised, I forgot to put the cheese on top, so I'm just going to pull it out and put the cheese on. That would be a very brave thing to do live on a VCE. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, you Zoom's good for lots of things. You should see me flipping pancakes. That's not good, so there's no way I'm going to try and flip one of the, do one of these. But uh, that's a very good tip, though. Thanks, Muncie. <laughs> All right, wow. Well, you guys are going to wish you had a lunch here, I can tell you. I'll just quickly show this to you. Yes. All right, fill it in. All right. Um, okay, so we're back to the prawns. Over here. So that was just my um, spices and things cooking there. Now I've got to add a third of the calamari and the prawns here. Move my computer back a little bit further, otherwise I'm gonna it's gonna be very fishy. So this is how so what my calamari looks like, like that, um, and just the little prawns here. So I'm going to put a third of them in there, guesstimate. Oops. Thank you, Doug. something on there. Okay, so lid back on again. 
uh, one minute, um, just on speed stir. So there's a little, little spoon mark there. Uh, and whilst that's happening, I'm just going to boil my kettle in the background and warm up, a, um, warm up my thermos there. So a really good idea when, with your thermo server is just to actually put some boiling water in it for five minutes before you put the um, whatever you're going to keep warm in there and it will do a really good job of, um, of yeah, keeping it warm for up to two hours. All right, questions? All right, I've only got two more questions. Uh, what does it mean when a recipe mentions a la Sevillana? So A, with lemons, B, with kumquats, or C, with oranges? Come on, more, more answers. What do we get from Seville? Orange, yes, oranges, yes, see, perfect. Um, all right. Back to my seafood. Using tongs, carefully remove it. So basically, I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to keep going with a third of the time, um, just cooking off, cooking off this seafood and um, what we'll do is um, I'll ask that last question um, and then we will actually go around to everybody and see, I'll see how Nicole's going um, with her status bravas. Uh, and, and we'll have a look at how everybody's plated up whilst I finish off this and my tortilla, which I've got to must remember. All right, so the last question is, what sort of dough is the popular Spanish de dessert served with chocolate made of? Short crust, shoe, or bread dough? Think of, um, you know, sitting down there with maybe a hot chocolate or something and you've, and you've got chocolate and you're dipping these things into your chocolate. Now, are those bees from the last question or this question? Because it is shoe pastry for the for the churros. Beautiful. Well done, everybody. Thank you for interacting with that. Um, and um, Boone, I might get you to flick around to. Uh, we might start with Nicole. If Nicole's ready for plating up. I've still got about ten minutes on mine. I just oh my and it does want a bit longer. Oh, okay. All right. Um, I'm good if you're ready. All right, go for it, Pam. Okay, Boone, maybe on my big camera. Hopefully you can see well enough there. Thank you. So I've just done a few here. I've got a couple that I'll just show you. Basically, I've um, filled up the uh, little mould there with some um, uh, with the salmon mix. I'm going to push that out. Oops. And then just top it off with a little... I've just washed... You'd be pleased. No, I've washed my hands so many times today. A little bit of avocado. So... Here's one here that I'll just do the last one. You can see the uh, watermelon in there. Just put a little bit in there, push it down so it sits nicely in the mould and then just push that through. Whoops, it doesn't mean I dropped it and made a mess with it. Of course I did. <laughs> anyway, you can pop it back on. That's easy enough done. I was a bit generous with that one. And then a little bit of avocado on top. And ta-da. <laughs> so there's still quite a bit of mixture there. I haven't done all of them. I could easily do another um, group of them. But you can see there's, um, I've did the larger ones as well as the smaller ones. Frankly, I think the larger ones you might need to eat with uh, possibly a knife and fork or definitely a serviette. But the smaller ones are, are more bite-sized sort of pieces. So uh, a lovely little Christmas um, entree or nibble before you sit down for a big roast uh, turkey. <laughs> um, but just ridiculously easy and very tasty and quite sophisticated. Oh, Thank you, Pam. That looks amazing. Um, all I right. Sorry? I can do mine. I'm ready. Perfect, Tasha. Thank you. So here we are, little tapas. 
little mushrooms full of cheese and, and herbs and goodies. And I'll have a with a glass of vino. <laughs> Love it, Keisha. Well done. Um, what we might do, because I know um, there's uh, I've still I'm still cooking the prawns and my tortilla is still going in the in the oven. Um, we might just have a quick look at the cookie do. Um, by the way, my first batch of prawns and seafood, I wasn't happy that it was cooked enough. I know you've got to be careful not to overcook. But, um, and, and they will be sitting in the thermosaver for a little bit, so I'm not too concerned now. But I did put it on for a second cook and actually turned the speed up. It is on reverse, so it's not going to shred anything. Um, but that, that's the first lot um, cooked, so I'm going to have to pull those out um, and keep going with the next lot. Um, so I'll quickly do that and then we'll have a quick look on cookie do. Um, do the people on I know we had at least one person with a TM31. And we also had um, some people with TM5. So do, do you all use cookie do? Or does anyone, if you could put in the chat box, anyone who doesn't use cookie do? Please. Just whilst I fish my, fish my fish out. All right. No one's answering. Okay. All right. Well, I'll just do a really quick... Um, just a, did a quick search before for tapas um, on Cookie Do. This looks amazing. Looking forward to looking forward to lunch. It's going to be beautiful. We've actually got a couple of friends coming over and um, have a relaxing afternoon. So basically, you just have to pull all everything out, uh, and then you put the next third in, and you go again. So I'll pop that one. I left something in there. And I'll just put the next lot in. Leave the oil and the herb mixture in, and you put the next lot, next third in. There we go. The only problem with the stylus is you tend to lose it. Put the lid on again. Now, it actually, so it says a minute. I'm actually going to adjust this. This is one of the things I love about the Thermix you can. I'm going to put that on for two minutes because I, I had to redo it anyway. And when I come to this, I actually turned it up to speed one. You can see it's on reverse, so it, is, it isn't going to chop. But I did end up, you can push past there. It's on speed one. All right. Quick little um, look at cookie do. No, that's not it. Let's do this. All right, so I just had a quick little search in here. Um, I included in um, the United Kingdom, the United States, and Australia, and I found 73 um, tapas recipes just by putting in tapas, obviously. And, and there's this. Um, a few of them will be duplicated. There's a beautiful ceviche that um, Pam's been making. Um, I made, did I make those? No, I haven't made those, but, um, but they, they look amazing, the eggplant. We were going to do those and then we ended up not making those. But there is some beautiful, it is a bit of a repeat actually, if you, if you look through here. But look, there's some clams. You can do the croquettes as well. Um, Mexican meatballs, hmm. chorizo. Spanish tortilla. Is that the one you were talking about, um, Monsi? This, this one, the Spanish tortilla? She's still there. Sorry, no. I was in mute. Yes, that's the one. That's the one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. No, that looks yeah. pretty good too. Yeah. Fantastic. Now, have you got um, any particular recipes that you recommend, Spanish recipes? Uh, um, or in Sp are they in Spanish? Yeah, I tend to use the Spanish uh, platform, but uh, uh, you can translate it quite easily with Google Translate yes. on your phone. Yeah, I'm basically, fine. what you will need to translate is the, um, uh, the ingredients because the steps are really similar to what we're doing in all the recipes. So it's going to say a speed temperature. Um, so, and if you're using a guided recipe, there is not much to translate, really. Yes. 
Yeah, that's very true. That is very true. Yeah. But so these are all. Um, so how many recipes in Spain? Oh, Spain the collection. Yeah, the collections are crazy. There are so many. Um, wow. Oh, well, that's not Spanish. That's no, German. no, no. I think that it, you just um, put all the. Oh yeah. Okay. All the countries. Yeah. yeah all the yeah, countries. Yeah. All, all right. Yeah. I'm just going to. Um, I'm just going to check my tortilla before I forget about it and burn it in there because that wouldn't be a good move. Oh, it's looking good. Oh my goodness. Um, I'll have to stop sharing the screen. I might go back in for a couple of minutes, but I'll tell you what. I'm impressed with my cooking. So, I'm going to put the glove on. Look at that. Wow. Mindy, oh. Mindy, you mean you're impressed by the thermal mix cooking? No, 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 my cooking, my cooking. Um, how good is that? Actually, I might it's put it back good. in just to make it a little bit browner on top there, but, well, it's exciting. As Pam said earlier, um, one of the great things about this is that we do get to try different recipes, things we haven't made before. So um, so that was a, that's a good one for, for remember. Right, I just need to know um, how Nicole is going. Mine just came out. I just got down at the oven just before my laptop died, so I reconnected on my phone. Right. Should be able to see that there. Oh my goodness, that looks amazing too. So that's our potatoes with chorizo, and that's um, our sauce. I didn't have a smaller one to put it into. The sauce is lovely. It's really quite spicy, which should be absolutely fantastic with the potatoes. Mm, fantastic. Yum. Thank you so much. Um, who else haven't we? So we've been to Nicole. We've been. We, um, Pearl. Pearl showed us anyway. Do you want to show us again, Pearl? Has she eaten them? <laughs> oh, look, yes. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if she'd eaten them. That looks, you're, you're on mute, Pearl. You're on it mute. Will, <laughs> it won't let me unmute her this time. <laughs> okay. So they've eaten part of it because they couldn't wait. So half is missing. It's really good. It's nice. It's really good. Yes, it That's is. fantastic. I'm just going to play it. I'm not, not going to do all the... Um, all my seafood. I'm just going to plate up what I've done already and then um, pull out my tortilla. Oh, yum. So, um, do you want to come back to me, Boone? Please? All right, so I'm going to take you on a little trip. I'm just going to literally pull my um, tortilla out and put it on my table and take you on a little trip to show you. All right, you're coming with me. Don't look at my kitchen, it's a bit messy. There you go, there's lunch. Wow. So, um, yeah, so we've got our, our beautiful tortilla and um, seafood, and I will finish off cooking the rest of that seafood. Um, so there's plenty for it all. Oh. All right. So does anyone have any questions? Has, da has Dan changed the rules about how many people can come over? Can I come? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I would. Has, has anyone got questions? You can take yourself off mute if you have got a question. No. All right. So just letting you, reminding you, anybody who is thinking about upgrading um, that bowl and blade set um, for $99 when you purchase a TM6, I reckon they'll be sold out by lunchtime tomorrow. There's only a thousand bowls left. And that sounds like a lot, but a thousand have sold since, um, actually nearly 2000 have sold since Friday lunchtime. So um, if you're after that, please contact your consultant and, um, and get onto that. I'd like to thank my team so much for coming along and giving up a little bit of sunshine to, to help um, give you guys all um, some tips and hints um, for um, cooking. And I hope you're inspired to 
to make some of this Spanish tapas, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm going to obviously going to um, start making more of it. But um, thank you so much. Thank you, Monsi, too, for, um, for putting your uh, little bits in here and there. And um, we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. Thank you.